Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are heaven. The name of the Lord, the Bible tells us, is a what? Strong tower, said the righteous, runs into it and they are saved. Hallelujah. That's the number one reason. Let's look at Luke, Luke 12, very quickly, or 13, Luke 13. Jesus said something very interesting. I'll read from verse 10, but the key verse there is verse 16. Luke 13, if you are there, say amen. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had what? Will come there. Notice, what did he say the woman had? Did he say the woman was sick? He said she had what? A spirit that caused infirmity. It didn't matter how it appeared physically. The Bible tells us that it was as a result of the presence of a real spirit. That's why the Bible says how God anointed jesus of nazareth all right acts chapter 10 verse 38 it says with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing those who were sick who were what oppressed hallelujah eighteen years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself verse 12 and when jesus saw her he called unto her and said woman thou art loose from thine infirmity 13 and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god and then the rulers had issues with it let's just jump to verse 15 the lord then answered him and said thou hypocrite do not each of you on the sabbath day lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering verse 18 and ought not this woman what is her qualification to be healed being what a daughter of aha uh -huh. so it's not ought not this woman being a nice woman or being a weak and a sick woman ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham Jesus was communicating a revelation because he said in Galatians 3 29 there about he says and if ye be Christ huh, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so the reality of redemption redemption is not just to glorify you alone it is also a rescue mission that means if you are not saved genuinely saved by surrendering totally to Jesus Christ you can be delivered one gallon of anointing oil can be poured on you I guarantee you these devils will live because of the fiery presence of God but you are not free are you seeing the reason why a lot of people get healed they get delivered right and then after a while Jesus gave us a revelation that when a demon leaves a man it goes through arid regions seeking for a place of refuge and finding not it would it would tell itself let me go back to where 
my house my house watch this and you go back and see that person swept clean but not occupied swept clean but empty and it will gather seven other demons greater than itself and return to the man so that the end of that man is even worse than the beginning the issue of the salvation of our souls is very very important gives us the license to be victorious both in this life and even after this place there are so many believers who want to receive things from God God I want you to heal me I want you to bless me I want you to change my story I want you to do this and that but the sincere truth is that many people do not want to surrender from to, unto God totally we want to use him as an errand boy you begin to talk to people about their salvation and they get offended I mean Christians believers not even unbelievers they just get offended at once I was born in a Christian house in fact I'm an elder in my church it doesn't matter the scribes were the ones who brought the greatest resistance to Jesus not even the sinners the religious people having a Christian name is not the same as submitting totally to Jesus Christ and there are people here tonight you've been around the things of God I don't care whether you're a pastor a bishop whatever you are you need to get it right the devil has legal access to invade any life that does not have the seal of the Holy Spirit through redemption. Are you getting me now? I use the word legal access. That means if you are not born again, you are the devil's property. Whether you believe it or not, it's irrelevant. On legal access, Adam gave Satan the authority of the earth. That was why when Jesus came in the flesh, even Jesus could not insult Satan and do certain things until he was glorified. Satan told him, follow me and let's climb a mountain. And Jesus went, followed him. He showed him the glories in a moment of time. And he said, just bow to me and I will give you all of this for it was delivered unto me. Hallelujah. We must take the issue of our salvation very seriously. And somewhere along this meeting, we are going to be making an altar call. And I know that there are people who will come and surrender everything and say, Lord, I'm tired of playing games with you. I mean business. Hallelujah. So number one, lack of total surrender to the will of God. Number two, this is very, very important. Number two, ignorance. I did a small jot in here. I said no or wrong knowledge. A man who is ignorant and a man who has the wrong information, they are all the same. Are you getting my point? Everybody say ignorance. Psalm 82. Verse 5. Psalm 82 verse 5. Brothers and sisters, knowledge in this kingdom is your key to walking experientially in victory. Can we read together? It's projected. One to read. Hold on. Who are the day? Who are this day that know not? Media, can you go back to verse 1? Just verse 1 quickly before we come to 5. Let's see who the day are so that we are not confused at all. Everyone read. One to read. And judge it among the among the this is this is a meeting of people who are they they are the gods he said know ye not that ye are gods so we're talking about believers here yet god is still querying them he's saying the earth is out of course because there's something wrong verse 5 he says they know not although they are gods they know not neither do they understand he said they walk in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 but have i not said ye are and all of you are what 
children of the most high next verse says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes have i not said unto you ye are gods and that all of you are children of the most high but lack of knowledge will make you die like mere men it's not enough to be saved you must be equipped with the revelation that sets you above hallelujah hallelujah i did a little experiment um, somewhere in abuja and i'm going to do it right now stand up mike stand up stand up come my dear stand up please come just one minute everybody watch do you play keyboard go and sit down there just play anything you know how to play please very quickly let's save time everybody watch this lady the problem is not with the keyboard watch this just play anything be very confident i think you should celebrate her come on she's she's even clapping for herself hallelujah she revealed to you her level of knowledge as far as walking this is concerned mike sit down and play anything just please. Hold on what's the difference five fingers both of them have it two eyes both of them have is that true same keyboard same chair same conditions are you getting what i'm saying now this sister may get angry and say Kai, this keyboard is not well tuned that's what that's the excuse a lot of believers are giving right but the bible tells us they know not so it is not that it is not possible they know not are you getting what i'm saying now two people sit on the same keyboard two people on the same stage of life exposed to the same opportunities exposed to the same challenges exposed to the same predicaments yet there are other people soaring victoriously as if satan does not exist and then there are others that have been buffeted by satan everybody say ignorance ignorance is a terrible thing in the spirit because it can make you suffer the same thing an unbeliever will suffer galatians chapter 4 now it says an heir you don't need to turn there for time's sake as long as he's a child one who is entitled to the blessings of royalty but as long as he's a child why in void of knowledge hallelujah he said he differed not from a slave but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Ignorance. The kingdom of God is a system. Write it. I've said this thing again and again. It's not enough to call Christianity a race. You must see the kingdom of God as a system. The kingdom of God has a financial system. There is a system in the kingdom that keeps people healthy people don't get healthy by luck please get this there is a system in the kingdom that keeps people protected there is a system in the kingdom that keeps people blessed there is a system in the kingdom that makes people successful are you getting what i'm saying now many believers are born again but we lack the knowledge the revelation the understanding of how the system the structure of the kingdom is built so we keep living our lives based on guesswork hallelujah let me talk about finance a little because it concerns everybody again and again there is the economic meltdown families all kinds of things are happening to people but i want you to know that god will be an irresponsible god to plant us in the earth without creating a system for our welfare and blessing every kingdom has an economic system are you getting what i'm saying and if you understand that system no matter where you are now it's only a matter of time the system has a force that compels you to be victorious because the power of god's word is that when the word of god is sent in any place 
it must create a garden of Eden out of that place. Otherwise, it will not stop working. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, is made of systems. What are the laws that govern finance, for instance? Write very quickly. I think I should just chip it in. Because the issue of money and finance is very important. Many of us just know that the way to be blessed in the kingdom, for instance, is just go to school, get a job, hope you get promoted. That's wonderful. But I'm sorry to tell you that's not the, that's not the system of God. Hallelujah. That kind of system will only lead to heart attack and stroke with time. Because no matter how hard working you are, it just will not be enough. It will make you stingy. It will make you greedy. You will never be able to have enough. Brothers and sisters, there is a provision in the kingdom. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with race. The Bible says, for in every nation, I have seen that God is no respecter of person, but that in every nation, the principles that has equal value everywhere across the earth. Genesis 8.22 That's the law that governs wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. It says, as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night, shall not cease this was a pronunciation that came from the mouth of god himself hallelujah very very important deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command thee this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you and it begins to list it. Many of us like claiming the blessings without the conditions. Abraham, according to scripture, represents the prototype of what God calls a blessed man. And in Isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bare thee. It says, For I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. In other words, if you want to be blessed in the kingdom, I have put a template for you. Understudy his life. Jesus was speaking to the Jews. He says, if ye be the sons of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. In other words, it's not about claiming. There are principles that Abraham followed. So you look onto Abraham as a model, as a principle. The Bible says that follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Not are obtaining it. They have obtained it. Listen, in the kingdom, the Bible says, as for the ancient path, don't invent one. The road has already been found. You will struggle fruitlessly forever find out and walk he said ask for the ancient parts ask from those who have found it and when you find it walk therein he said and you shall find rest for your souls praise the lord praise the lord every herbalist every every satanist every occultist knows that wealth and prosperity is spiritual if you suddenly see Benga, for instance, next week and you see him unusually blessed, everybody will look at him and say, you have gone somewhere. Not you have done something, you have gone somewhere. You went to ask questions somewhere. But there is, a, there is an economic principle. I just feel like, that's really not my emphasis, but I think I need to just say it so that we can get certain things. What are the principles? Number one, tithing. Let me just write it very quickly. Tithing. Tithing. I know that we have taught again and again in this place, but for the sake of probably those who are coming for the first time, please look at me. If your giving in the house of God is with the mentality of donation, you will die broke forever. Are you getting me? There are many people who give in the house with the mindset of donation. We want to help the needy this needy church i'm a rich person or i'm mm -mm. you must give in the kingdom understanding that number one you love god and number two you are engaging the lord that releases the supply of heaven 
tithing when abraham came back from the war the bible says he met with a man called melchizedek hallelujah and he said melchizedek blessed abraham as a result of his giving his tithe he blessed abraham and said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth and abraham's destiny opened up malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 begins to tell us the contemplation between god and the nation of israel he says will a man rob god from verse 8 he says yet ye have robbed me he said wherein have we robbed you this is god speaking calling people robbers he said you people have robbed me hallelujah in malachi chapter 1 he begins to talk to them about the kinds of offerings they bring to god and he said look at the kind of animals you bring you bring lame animals and all of this give this to your governor and see if he will accept it and then he now begins to tell us will a man rob god he said wherein have we robbed he said in tithes and offerings and then he says you are cursed with a curse are you seeing that now that one is not the cause of the law is the cause is is the woe that follows anyone who is not interested in being faithful in tithing then verse 10 says bring ye how many how many bring ye all not some all the tithe into the storehouse he said and prove me here with saith the lord if i will not number one open unto you the windows of heaven right that you will not have room enough to contain it number three he says and i will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast its young before its time hallelujah then it talks about you being blessed and you being a delightsome land all the nations will call you blessed a delightsome land a favored land seven prophetic blessings for being a faithful let me tell you something every time you are not faithful in tithing the heavens are scripturally entitled to be closed over your finances it doesn't matter how you pray and beg god the devourer is permitted to come into your life it doesn't matter how hard you walk for i have seen that the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong hallelujah the Bible says, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over the city. He said, the watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up in, early in the morning and sleep late in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. He said, but he giveth unto his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. So your giving or your tithing. Number two is your giving. Luke 6 38 give and it will be given unto you another way of putting it don't give and what will happen it will not be given unto you as simple as that it's a non-negotiable condition give and it shall be given unto you the bible says press down shaken together running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure you give that is the same measure you'll be given hallelujah god will not bring you into the earth knowing the importance of finance and leave you stranded i'm not talking about this money mongering prosperity teaching that is just an issue of gimme 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 i'm talking of revelation that produces decent results in your life where you understand that the finances of the kingdom has a mission hallelujah second corinthians 8 verse 9 ye know the grace of our lord jesus that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich hallelujah second corinthians 8 from verse 6 or second corinthians 9 from verse 6 down begins to tell you he that sweat sparingly shall reap sparingly he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully hallelujah he said let every man give as he has purposed in his heart not grudgingly of necessity for god loves a cheerful giver the next verse says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work 
Hallelujah. In Philippians chapter 4, when you begin to read from verse 13 down, Paul was beginning to talk to the Macedonian church how that they gave of themselves first. They gave of themselves. They gave within their power and even beyond their power. He said, not that I desire a want, but I desire fruit that will be credited unto your account. And then in verse 19 of Philippians 4, he says, my God, we claim that verse, but we do not know the conditions that led to it. He was speaking to people who were givers. My God shall supply your needs. Not according to your needs, according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a formula. There is a path that leads to the blessing of the kingdom. All kinds of giving. Under giving, there are different kinds. There is your worship offering. The Bible says not to appear before God in Zion empty-handed. That means he has made provision for you to always be able to come to Zion with something in your hand. It's just that it's our greed and our being stingy. If I give, what? when will I get another one? The one you have has not helped you too. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, under giving. I just want to talk a bit on finances. I just sense in my spirit to talk about it. Your worship offering. Number two is your giving to parents. Look, let me tell you, if you miss this, you will die broke forever. I don't care how many gallons of anointing oil is poured on your head. Giving to parents. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. That what will happen? Your days will be long. That's the secret of longevity. And it shall be well with you. There are many young people facing roadblocks and predicaments in their lives because they dishonor their parents. Take what I'm saying very, very seriously. Honor your father and your mother. In Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord. It teaches us how to honor with your substance. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. Verse 10 says, So then shall your barns be filled with plenty and your vats, your presses to overflowing. Hallelujah. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three is kingdom investments. That you hear that there is a project in the house of God. The psalmist said, for the sake of your house, I desire my, your prosperity. I'm looking for money for the sake of your house. That there is any project towards soul winning. Towards building of the house of God. David was sitting down and he thought to himself. He said, how can I be in such a palace like this? And there is no house for my God. He said, although you are so mighty, you do not need a place for habitation. But I will build you a house. And God said, you have shed too much blood. You can't build me a house. Because of his love for God, he gathered the resources so that it will make it easy for his son. Please listen. I know that there are men of God that play all kinds of prosperity gimmicks just to get money from people. But let me tell you the truth. Do not in a bit to discredit what is wrong. Kill the opportunity for the authentic revelation of the blessing because it will tell on you badly. Hallelujah. Is someone getting blessed? Hallelujah. Kingdom investments. I never hear about anything that is, is, is an opportunity to give or so for the advancement of the kingdom and not be part of it. Impossible. No matter how little. No matter how little. And then your heavens are open in strange ways. The thing about the prosperity of the kingdom, we've done that. You can get our message on financial dominion, a four part series. It's not all about money. That's what worldly wealth cannot, it can just give you nice clothes and this, but it cannot protect you. A teenager killed the president of a nation. A teenager with all his security, one gunshot and he was dead. That's a terrible life. That's not prosperity. Are you getting my point now? But Daniel entered the lion's den and he came out safe. Hallelujah. And then you're giving what we know as priestly or 
is popularly called in the Pentecostal circles prophet offering. Although huh, this one has been bastardized and abused because you see when it comes to prophet offering. The man of God is the ultimate beneficiary. So the way we flog it and cane people out. Have you given prophet offering? Can I tell you something? No true man of God lives by the wealth of his congregation. God never sends a man of God to be a burden to any congregation. Any true man of God is blessed by his personal obedience and compliance of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the queen of Sheba brought her wealth and gave Solomon... The Bible says Solomon blessed her with everything she desired. You must learn to honor whatever grace that God uses to feed and bless you. I know it has been abused, but it is very true. Some of us were in different churches and we watch our pastors. We watch their families and we, it never crosses our heart to bless them. Because you say this man said, how many rema does he have? This one that he's preaching, he's mentioning Genesis and quoting Revelation. So what? Hallelujah. These are kingdom principles. And then giving to the poor and the needy. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Imagine borrowing a rich man money. Ah, I like that kind of business. When you borrow a rich man money, I gave an example when we we're doing financial dominion. Imagine a multimillionaire saying, please, you have 15 naira, give me. You will give quickly because he will not give you back 15 naira. He that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Hallelujah. That was the secret of the wealth of Job. Job began to talk how that he responded to the need of the poor and the needy. He said, in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. Hallelujah. So many things happened to him. Greed. Greed is what has destroyed many people in the body of Christ. Greed. There is he that scattered, the Bible says, and yet increased. There is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty. In this time of recession, in this time of financial lack, you will have to give your way to a realm of unhealthy ending well it may take time but let me tell you the bible says the righteous will flourish like a palm tree study the palm tree it doesn't grow at once but it's growing but in one year the palm tree will blossom he said even in old age they will be fat and flourishing hallelujah is someone learning something so do you see the reason? It's not just about demons and Satan. Many of us like the fact that if I call this lady now, I say, do you know that there is somebody who is tying your money? They say, yes, I've always known. Please, I've always known. As if you have been obeying the principles of the kingdom. You're not tithing, you're not giving. And in this era of the prophetic, many people have become gullible. Please don't criticize the prophetic. It is very important for the agenda of God. It's just that it must be balanced. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. The third point, I spoke about number one, uh, not surrendering to the kingdom. Number two, ignorance. I just digressed a bit to talk about finances. Then number three, disobedience to kingdom principles. Different kingdom principles. Hallelujah. If I ask you a question, please just write it and look up. I have to run. If I ask you, what is your basis of believing you are going to live long in the kingdom? What are you going to tell me? The blood of Jesus or because Jesus died? What is, what is your confidence that you will celebrate Christmas in 2014. In this wickedness that we have. Boko Haram doing everything. What is your exemption? What are you standing on that exempts you? Are you seeing why I'm... There are principles, brothers and sisters. Longevity. Different people want to live long. I had to study for myself. I told myself, I said, oh boy, if you want to live long, you better find out what the Bible has put. 
and number one is honor to parents he said honor your father and your mother every time i want to travel i'll call my mother and say how are you god bless you and i know my journey is safe for sure number two he said i shall not die but live to declare that means if you are not declaring her i shall not die there is an immunity that comes upon me because i'm an envoy advocating the agenda of the kingdom hallelujah praise the lord number three i said before you life and death blessing and cursing but i advise you choose life that you may live i chose it i chose it absolutely hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying now so it is on the strength of this revelation you can say in the name of jesus i know i know hallelujah what is your scriptural basis of believing that you will live in health just because you are bearing a christian name no brothers and sisters no just because you went to school there is a basis there is a basis hallelujah he said i will let none of these diseases that came upon the egyptians to come upon you but there is a reason he said no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick he said if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will quicken revitalize make alive hallelujah obedience we must pay attention he said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your heart keep them in the midst from your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life not to christians to those who care to find them and health to their flesh hallelujah let's hurry up so that's the third reason why things don't go well with people the fourth reason which is most important is demonic oppression the bible tells us that the whole world lies in wickedness and i've said it again and again don't let anybody play church games with you and deceive you with suit we live in a wicked world the condition to be a prospective victim of wickedness is that you are born of a woman as simple as that you don't need to offend anybody the whole world lieth in wickedness we live in a very wicked world someone can look at you and vow and say over my dead body it will not be well with you ah, ah, they looked at jesus christ what did he do they sat down and held a meeting to kill him and jesus said if they have done it unto me they will do it to you hallelujah that means you must learn how to keep the devil where he belongs that's why he gave us power hallelujah psalm 66 verse 3 it says how all inspiring are your ways through the greatness of thy power not through making noise and wearing suit through the greatness of your power will your enemies submit themselves hallelujah many of us have been deceived this is a nice world don't trouble satan satan will not trouble you and you just say i'm not looking for anybody's trouble <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The whole world lies in wickedness. After struggling for five years to get a job, you now get the job and somebody looks at you and says, I don't like you. You didn't do anything wrong. I just don't like you. And as long as I'm in this office, because for one position for promotion, there are 10 or 5 people qualified. Everybody is going to their own babalao and you are there strolling, believing because you, are, you have a Christian name. Brothers and sisters, please wake up as we approach the coming of christ the fierceness of evil becomes stronger and it is they that know their god daniel eleven thirty two. they that know their god they that not they that have heard about him they that know their god shall be strong you see all these people gathered here it would take god opening your eyes to see the satanic plots to stop people from coming for this meeting but it takes an authority. 
oh this is the part about the kingdom i like i love the fact that our the kingdom we live in is not some kingdom full of fear and timidity it's a kingdom of power and authority hallelujah praise the lord i remember a woman came to me for counseling one time when she was about she got married newly you know and 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 that was quite some decades ago and she couldn't have a child so she went to a stream somewhere you know and all kinds of things were done for her and they told her make sure you have a daughter and before that daughter gets married make sure you return her and the woman said you may have been dead by that time he said see my son and he pointed one small boy who was just playing around he said by that time this boy will now be the priest return her so that something will be done hallelujah now the lady graduated and the women advised the mother and say madam we know you are a christian but this world we are living in just quietly go who will know just go and settle this thing and come back there are many people under all kinds of yokes who have been made to believe that once you are born again everything is over brothers and sisters it is true that in christ the old is supposed to have gone but satan will not just release you at a platter of gold it will take enforcing what christ has done for him to let you go hallelujah and pharaoh refused to let them go after nine plagues although god had given the command pharaoh refused to let them go hallelujah and then in the book of exodus he said one more plague will i bring upon pharaoh and upon egypt after that he will let you go one more plague hallelujah i'm glad to announce to you tonight the devil must give up on you finally there are many women suffering barrenness many people suffering all kinds of sicknesses there are many of us we are sitting here laughing but nothing is working in our homes it's not like you are not the day you just announce in the family that there is a project that's the day everything will scatter let god bless the family with small resources everybody gets sick until the money finishes then they will become confined by themselves i was diagnosed i've shared my story some of you were born in nice families they took care of you the devil never oppressed you that's why you have not understood the implication i was diagnosed of a fungal infection i had no account of just appeared this head you are seeing was literally rotting and they told me hair will never grow on my head again i know what evil the that's why i will live every day one of my life's mission is to give hell headache till i transit to celebrate with jesus christ mm that my waking up every morning must be a nightmare to the kingdom of darkness hallelujah there was nothing this sponge this hard sponge you scrub the back of pot with they used it to scrub my head blood was coming out it was not out of wickedness it was out of frustration Oh, I know what wickedness looks like, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you. The students complained that I was irritating them in the dining hall. And so they stopped me. They banned me from going to the dining hall because I was irritating the students. When it's time for food, I will give somebody my plate and beg them to please help me and collect food. And I will stay alone. Ha! There is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain there was a season in my family people were dying like chickens look let me tell you something my grandfather for some of you who are around the north my grandfather they were the trustees and the founders of church of christ in nigeria i come from a, a lineage of missionaries but it did not solve the problem in my family are you getting my point all the first bonds I saw the I saw the pattern 
they became useless people either they got a lady pregnant out of wedlock or something happened that scattered their lives and reduced them into it i what my father's elder brother died at a particular age range my father's younger brother died at that same time just thank god that by the time my father was getting around that range we had gotten the revelation look let me tell you doctor pastor paul and Enche said this world is not a playground it's a battlefield if you don't adjust your mind fast you will be in for a rude shock are you getting what i'm saying i remember some years ago someone got married hallelujah and we went for the wedding in kaduna i'll never forget this quite quite some years ago and when we went for the wedding they had a step they had a stepmother true story true story there was a stepmother and we noticed that people were dancing and dropping gifts please listen people were dropping all kinds of gifts and when they had finished you know they were about to pack the gifts we noticed that the guy's stepmother just came a small gift that looked like a a small bucket you know this bucket you put flour or sugar inside and just wrapped it and dropped it and when i looked at it another brother too saw it i said kai because we we're going to pray for the wedding gifts and i insisted that we open this thing and see what is inside when we opened it what did we see a white bucket they just put a stone inside and closed it god is my witness welcome to planet earth where all kinds of people are permitted to live those who love god those who hate god and those who hate you and if you don't do anything about it they will take you to the grave hallelujah mm. many families let me tell you are suffering this mysterious sicknesses and diseases that they cannot explain just comes upon a man and a family there are some of us here you just went to the hospital for tests and they told you you have hiv you have left you you lived a pure life hallelujah something has happened in the realm of the spirit i remember somebody i think it was here is on video that he slept quietly and in the night somebody appeared to him with a syringe and said this is hiv virus injected it into him and he woke up physically with hiv I'm not scaring you. I'm letting you know that if you are not aware that this devil is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? Somebody suffers in school. You now finish school. You go and serve. You graduated with first class or two and five years down the line. There's no decent job. No decent job. You want a job. The manager is saying you know what to do. And now you want to keep your Christian integrity. But you don't know how to command the forces of darkness to bow. You now announce in your family that God is calling me to be a pastor. From that day, your whole life is tied into pieces. Everything you do does not work. Brothers and sisters, I don't celebrate Satan and evil, but I'm letting you know there is evil in this world right now. But there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, it's in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It's to break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. I shared with us the testimony brothers and sisters if not that i saw this woman i would think it's a lie i've heard about it but i i was to i was to experience it for myself a woman who gave birth to a dead baby that came out half man half monkey half man half monkey with hair if not that i was sitting face to face with this woman if i had another man of god say it i may join those saying this is a lie some exaggeration just to make the message look powerful I've seen all kinds of evil but in the name that is above all names there is an authority that must command the forces to bow 
see this is what happens to people and you find out that one breakthrough will just open every area of your life are you seeing many of us are struggling you are trying to fight your health you are trying to fight this whereas there is a root problem if that problem is not dealt with you may be healed but it will appear as something else i hope you know that every believer is likened to a tree how do you make a tree healthy do you clean the leaves you add fertilizer at the root how do you destroy a tree you deal with the root the bible says the righteous is like a palm tree is that true this is the mystery of total breakthrough you must see every man like a tree you waste your time trying to remove the leaves at once when you address the problem it's like somebody who is complaining of headache but the real issue is typhoid fever you can take panadol again and again you will receive temporary relief but tonight some things will be totally settled in the name of jesus christ you will find out one area of your life and then marriage opens up then job opens up then your academic opens up and that's when you say goodness so this is it a dear lady of us even while i was in abuja last week I, I met with her this lady had worked for four years very hard working lady she was here i remember that time it's on video also one fair lady that came from abuja and i prayed for her this lady for four years she had been working no promotion no benefits no nothing every area of her life was grounded i prayed for this lady and she went back to abuja and her boss looked at her he said come you've been working in this place what has been done for you right now this lady follows the boss and travels with him everywhere when her friends heard about it they say it's because you are fine she says have i not been here four years with the same pretty face nothing changes by itself till you force it to change it will change one day is a dream if you force it it will change are you getting what i'm saying there are many of us you are standing outside students you are you are suffering things are not working people think you are dull but you are not dull you enter the exam hall you blank out and then you will do tutorials and be helping others when they are marking scripts your script gets missing the wickedness the bible says while men slept an enemy came and planted tears in the wheat and ran away there are all kinds of people lumps fibroids barrenness cysts all kinds of nonsense all around until you know the might of god you will keep getting afraid of satan but when you know who god is you will know once and for all that this devil he was created and that he can submit to the authority of his creator who am i speaking to tonight is your season for real change you can see you can sit down and watch others there are many of our sisters here as you're sitting down right now it's not like you are not pretty it's not like you are not virtuous you have done everything you have read every book you've knelt down for every man to greet them but no marriage something is wrong it even becomes a terrible situation when it's the man that doesn't have a wife to marry. And this is it's easy to understand for the ladies because they position themselves to be found. What of the man? Hallelujah. But the Lord prepared this apostolic and prophetic platform to end these assaults of darkness in our lives listen many of us are the only saviors of our parents right now and our families you know we believe in family in this place right your salvation is not complete until the members he said as for me and my house hallelujah every one of us standing here came from a family and let me tell you no matter how blessed you are if your family is not changed for many years my father was grounded at his place of work his juniors were being promoted everything was working for others except him this man was almost dying of high blood pressure and one day i got angry and we had to settle the issue tonight god will settle some family so please take what i'm saying seriously i'm speaking like this because shortly we are going to pray hallelujah
there are some of you anytime somebody wants to bless you something will happen to that person and just cut him. somebody says i want to bless your family everything becomes grounded there are some of us who are in ministry you have done everything you know groundbreaking prophetic match round everything nothing is growing but jesus christ brought us here tonight so that we can experience his victory hallelujah and in a few minutes we have to pray before i begin to minister brothers and sisters i want you to pray and say father visit me i didn't just come to watch others and clap hallelujah the power of god is present to heal no matter what the sickness is no matter what the sickness is believe is it cancer is it hiv is it fibroid is it genotype issue no matter what it is you are stranded in whatever area of your life please position yourself because god is about to do mighty things right now no matter how far you are inside or outside talk to the lord don't be joking this is about your destiny this is your chance for a change of story say lord i'm tired i'm tired of clapping for others lord visit me i want to make progress in my life but there are forces that tie me down lord is the season where you will increase my greatness i'm tired of this terminal disease tired of this cancer they've told me i have days to live i'm tired of walking on a wheelchair i'm tired of this blindness tired of this deafness tired of this sickle cell anemia jesus you died and already paid the price you paid the price already oh yes jesus paid the price with his blood he paid the price already it was paid in full he paid the price for that cancer to live he paid the price for that hiv to dry up he paid the price for that barren womb to be fruitful he paid the price he paid the price go ahead and pray and say jesus you have paid the price jesus you have paid the price for the deliverance of my family we are tired of this hardship it's not your will for us to continue in this hardship and lord like jacob we hold on to you tonight we will not let you go till you change our story come on pray koinonia we will not let you go those outside are you praying lord change my story academically i'm tired of writing jam again and again and again and again and again change my story change my story you already paid the price you already paid the price oh hallelujah he has paid the price hallelujah he paid it with the blood of jesus the blood of jesus is the price the price the devil must let you go the blood has been shed already jesus said it is finished that cancer is finished hiv is finished the devil may not want to let you go but you will enforce the word the bible says how forcible are right words how forcible are right words how forcible rise up on your feet everybody and begin to blast in tongues and said my time has come my time has come oh god my time has come tonight you will visit me as your blessed man let your eyes see me oh god 
as you are changing stories visit me visit me visit me visit me visit me oh God that epilepsy must die tonight that yoke of financial hardship hallelujah hallelujah I believe hallelujah hallelujah the power of God is in this place I believe Lord I believe listen 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 let me tell you something hallelujah the man who laid down at bethesda he'd been like that for 38 years there is a way a situation has been so long in your life even when they are telling you god will change it you say lord change the rest tonight do not leave any stone unturned are you getting my point whatever it is you're trusting god for many of us left different states many of us left different local governments i like you to pray and say lord for this and that and that area of my life he must give way tonight yes lord it must give way tonight it must give way. The power of God is already moving across this place. Goodness. Hold on. hallelujah hallelujah listen powers that hold your hands and tie your destiny must let you go hallelujah I see miracle everywhere miracle everywhere I see miracles everywhere right now, right miracles. We see miracles. Lord, we see miracles right now. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Listen, listen, listen to me. I tell you, there is a strong spirit of faith in this place. Listen, listen, please listen to me first. Many of you will be surprised what will happen to you right now. Hallelujah. God is going to the root of people's issues. It's not just sickness or this. Please believe me. The the Lord kept telling me this again and again. The root, the root of the issue. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray right now. I'm about to pray inside and outside. There will be such a release of the forcible power. You can't stand it. No. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of your son, there are forces of darkness that are responsible for the tears of many people and families. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we shout that name, let there be such a move, my God. My God, lift your hands. At the count of three, I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. As you shout that name, devils will leave right now. One, two, three. The power of God right now. 
I command forces, forces of darkness, yokes, yokes of darkness, yokes, bring them out. The fire of God is falling. I challenge altars. Outside, the power of God is Lift your hands. The devil must let you go to Lift your hands. Hallelujah. I see a number of people inside and outside, and I see chains all over you. Chains. As you shout this name, it's already happening to people right now. As I speak, as I shout that name, Jesus, when you shout it, many of you will hear sounds of physical chains dropping. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus! I give the chains. Those outside, lift your head. Just those outside. Those outside, lift your head. Hallelujah. I see the angels of the Lord moving outside. Lift your hands. Those outside, you're going to shout Jesus. There will be such a move of fire, physical fire outside. Are you ready now? Those outside. One, two, three. Come, 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 Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The spirit of delay. 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 The Lord is talking to me now. Hallelujah. The power of God will fall on certain people. Straight up. God is killing the spirit of delay. And I see this row. The angel of the Lord is standing upon this row. Right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of delay. Across this row. Go, 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 I Hallelujah. 
Sign up. Sign up. Sign up. Sign up. Gabriel. 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 Please, let's save time. The Lord is showing me witchcraft. This is serious witchcraft. Gabriel, outside. That guy is outside. You are wearing something like green. Greenish, like flowery something. Green. Where is that? You, do you know me? Come and stand here. Your, 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 time, your time has come. Please stand up. Stand up. Let's save time. I give the chains. The chains falling. She said, Let her go now. You are a devil of darkness. Release her family now. Release her family now. Release her family now. I do the chains. Hallelujah. Look at me. My brother, I need to pray for you. There's nothing working in your life. Is that true? Look at me. Absolutely nothing. People just see you and see you dressing well. There is not financial. Nothing is working. Look at me. You are a sincere person. Are you getting my point? You have cried. You have cried. There's nothing you have not done. But tonight, God wants to change your story. Bring that lady. Because I see her going through the same thing this guy is going through. Bring her. Let her go now and forever. In Jesus' name. Go! brother in the name of jesus christ i prophesy to you look at me things will so change and turn around in your life you will be surprised you believe this father let it be done in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing military uniform who is a soldier who is a soldier around you i'm seeing this I live in the barracks. You live in a barrack because I'm seeing military uniform. Hallelujah. God is going to help you. Huh? You need the help of God. You have gotten to a point where you have done the best by yourself. It will take God to help you. Hallelujah. Victoria. 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 The Lord is showing me a name, Victoria. We may not call everybody Victoria. Victoria. Ah. Well, I believe when God speaks to one, he speaks to all. Where's the person I was talking to? He has gone. I've not finished, my brother. Hallelujah. Come. We're going to break the course. This, this is, I'm saying this is, this is a yoke of darkness. Please hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break this evil right now. <sighs> Madam, I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing a man. I'm not seeing a woman. I'm looking at you, I'm seeing a man. The power of God is going to come upon a lady now. There will be a loud shout. Let me have that lady here. It's going to happen right now. There is a strong force of the spirit. It will, it will be so strong upon the person. Please, when that happens, break every chain. Break every chain. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you. Please, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Come, sister. Just those who came out, don't take them back. Just, just leave them. Hold my hands. Out of her. Go. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Devil of darkness. 
Father, I pray for all of the people. My brother, I didn't pray for you. That was why. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Change his story in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll just lay hands on you people. I don't know what the issue is. But as I lay hands, I'm seeing a man. Huh? I want to pray for you. Please. Because this thing has tied your life down. Lord, let her be free. In the name of Jesus. Let her be free. In the name of Jesus. Please, if I pray for you, just go back. Change their story, so God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever reason you brought them out, change their stories. As I lay my hands on you, I want you to know that everything is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A drama will be acted in this place shortly now. Look up. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to release marriages. This is it. It will start answering from this lady. It will start moving across right now. The power of God will start touching people. I'm about to pray. I've not prayed yet. It will start touching ladies, especially ladies. In a strange way, God is releasing marriages supernaturally. Supernaturally. This way, just like this. Just like this, down. That's how I see the power of God moving. Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We to every cause of marital delay. Leave God people now. 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 Every cause. Bring them out. Bring them out. Every spirit. Stopping marriages. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Every spirit. Stopping marriages. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Bible says male and female, he created them. Not male and male. Not female and female. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names. If there is any family here that their marital destiny has been tied down as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives right now may the fire of the Holy Ghost move and cause deliverance right now every spirit husband every spirit wife every devil every demon go go by the fire of the Holy Ghost every heart of witchcraft that has tied families we release you right now Hallelujah. Goodness. God is setting families free. Oh, the devil must give up on you tonight. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That girl on red, tying red scarf, there is an angel pouring oil on her right now. Right now. 
I cause that spirit. Go, go out of her right now. In the name of Jesus. That's right, that's the lady. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is coming upon her right now. Go, go, go. Release her right now. Release her right now. Release her right now. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to know you mustn't manifest and do all these things. God is just setting people free. Are you getting my point? I like us to just flow with what God is doing right now. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. I'm seeing a lady. You had a dream and a dog pursued you and beat you. Please, who is that person? I, I like us to save time, please. I may not talk to everybody, but we still have a lot of things to do. Please, hurry up. Who is that person? Well, if, it's, if you are thinking about it, just remain on your seat, please. This is not guesswork. This is what the Holy Spirit, because we have to pray for the sick. You're going to be free right now. You're going to be free right now. I give the chains, the chains for you. Please hold my hand. It ends right now, oh Lord. It ends. Release her right now. Release her right now. That power of darkness. Let her go. In Jesus' name. Please come, let me pray for you. I break that demonic thing over your life. In the name of Jesus. I break that demonic thing over your life. In the name of Jesus, that demonic thing over your life, in the name of Jesus Christ, we break that demonic thing over your life, in the name of Jesus, look at me, your family, it's not even you now, you are a worker in this house, and as a worker you are entitled to certain blessings, huh? your family, there is a cause of hardship upon your family. Your entire family. Hold my hands. You must be free right now. Let her go. Representing her family. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. What is this that I see in the spirit? You must let her go. Because she's a faithful worker in this house. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release your family. I release your family. I release your family in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me the vision of a tree and I'm seeing it tied with ropes. Tied with ropes. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. It's tied and this is like the destiny of this family. And they've done everything to tie it. But I release it right now. I release it by the spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I prophesy on everybody whatever the devil has tied the destiny of any family that has been tied be released now 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 now. every destiny that has been tied by witchcraft be released now Hallelujah. 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 I tell you the breakthroughs that are happening. Many of you will leave this place. You will be surprised. Just believe me. There is somebody outside. Two people, in fact, the fire of God will rush upon them right now in a mighty and strange way. They will never be able to contain it outside. When that happens, let me have those people. If two people in a powerful way is happening right now by the Spirit, 
you can't stand it you will just be standing and it will come on you in a wild way like fire like wild fire it will come upon you please let me have the ladies like wild fire it will turn you you will be running it will happen to you you will be running around you will be running around there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah. Who is Salome? There is a wild spirit in this lady's family. This lady you are seeing. Let her go now. This is Benway State. In the name of Jesus, release this family now. Release this family now. Hallelujah. Salome. The meaning of your name in your language is like treasure. Treasure or something precious. Who is that? like treasure or don't tell lies here oh please you are the one what is what's your name no no salome just wait here you are the one salome the the meaning of your name i'm going to pray for you salome where's your mother she's at home where we need to pray. God wants to give your family breakthrough. Out of her now. Out of her. Out. Out right now. Out. Out of her. Out. Bring them. She parata barrigate bragade bosha. Nipa so paria tabaria dos de caparata. Ibra tosa palia tabaco seca de bragadia. Veteste parata baco seca de leva. Sipana baco. I set your family free right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now be free. Now be free. Now be free. Out, out, be free in the name of the Lord Jesus. May you become that treasure truly. Let your days of crying come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Please rise up. I want us to pray. I'm seeing a lecturer that is going to die next week. If we don't pray, he's going to die. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. God just interrupted this. Please stand up. In one minute, I'd like us to pray before we continue. And say we refuse death. I'm seeing a professor dying next week. Lord, we plead the blood. The blood of God, we bleed the blood of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who came with people who are sick, it's time to minister to them right now. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. I know that there are a lot of people and we want to do it very, very fast. I'm sorry we don't take too much time to announce instant miracles. Now, you know, we are bounded by time. If we're doing an afternoon program, we can take so many things. Hallelujah. So I want, it's not like we're not celebrating what God is doing. It, it would have been easy now to just ask these people to testify, to encourage us. But we don't have all of that time now. There are so many people. There are people after this meeting now may return to certain places. Hallelujah. Please and please. Please and please. We don't fake miracles in this place. We don't. We believe in the power of God. I know that many people have come trusting God for healing. And I know that some of us have come with our loved ones. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please. I want us to be orderly in this place. No fighting. No nothing. By the grace of God, we are going to minister to everybody one by one. Hallelujah. Praise God. So please and please, I want you to cooperate with us. Hallelujah. The worship team will lead us in a powerful worship song while we allow those who are sick. You came with someone sick or you are sick. Now is your time to walk up to the front. Come and stand and trust Jesus for a miracle. And make sure you are writing your prayer request if you don't have any prayer request. Hallelujah. Please. If it's someone that cannot stand, maybe if there's a way, protocol can help the people and then maybe we can have a chair or something, whatever it is. Jesus Christ. Those of you standing, lift your hands and begin to thank God for the miracles of people. Please pray. Please pray. His presence is here to him. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise. Those of you coming out, please begin to pray and say, Lord, my time has come. I know you have all kinds of medical reports. Forget about them right now. HIV cases, cancer cases, whatever it is, genotype. Don't worry. Jesus is Lord in this place. Lord, we thank you. His presence. Please, let's save time. If you've not written your prayer request, start writing it. He, his presence is here. His presence is here to heal. His presence is here. Let your faith rise. Lord, my time has come. I'm not going back the same. From headache to infection, no matter how little. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah Rapha. There is a God that heals in the house. To heal. One more time. One more time. To heal. Jesus heals. To heal, to Jesus heal. heals. You will be delivered. I don't care what the situation is. To heal, to heal. Oh, I am Lord. I am the Lord. The His presence is here to heal. To heal. Son of man, can this bone? hallelujah i want you to know whatever the situation is there is a god 
We are not against doctors. We have doctors here as workers. But let me tell you, it gets to a point in your life where you have done your best. When you have done your best, leave it all to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit as I minister to you right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The anointing of the Spirit is strong and I see the angels of the Lord here. Many of you, what you call sickness is not sickness, it's witchcraft. Huh? You will be delivered from it and that will be the end of it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's, when he's ready, he can come and join me. Jake is deeply in the Spirit, so just let him. When he's ready, Jesus, I give you all the praise. Those of us who are there, please don't be carried away. Make sure you participate and let's trust the miracle working power. Especially those of you who God is calling you into a healing ministry. Now is the time to look. Now is the time to concentrate so that you will receive something. We give you all the praise. Check yourself. God is healing people. Come and see in the presence of Lord. Be healed. Hold on, Be please. Healed. Hold on. Hallelujah. Daddy, don't cry. What's wrong with you, sir? I, I'm suffering from arthritis since 30 years. 30 years. Brothers and sisters, 30 years arthritis. Uh, and it is a sign of stroke. It gives me a sign of stroke. Is your father? Is your father? Come. What did they tell him in the hospital? Sir, he's having arthritis. He's having deep. It's not just arthritis. I'm seeing pile. I'm seeing pile. I'm seeing pile. This is witchcraft. Do you have pile? Yeah. I'm if I want to, if I want to, uh, easy yourself, easy myself, the thing will be strong. That's what I'm saying. It's pile. This is pile. It's not just arthritis alone. This is pile. This is this is an evil thing. Is that pile? Yes, sir. It's having pile. You are having pile. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You too. You are having pile now. See, this is a cause to destroy everybody in your family. It's not just your father. This thing has been there since. Since. Are you getting my point? You are not the only one. You have suffered with this pile. Even you, it has embarrassed you. It's just something you cannot tell people. Because I'm seeing that if they don't help, you will start bending. It will start like your leg will start paining you. The same thing that is happening to your father will happen to you. You've done for me what no man can do. Jehovah, Jehovah, you've done, you've done for me, me. what no one else will do. There is a name that is greater than any ancestry. You will be the first to be healed. Come, hold my hand. Pile, go now. You are a devil of darkness. I curse you out from her life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Daddy. I bring you the life of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming upon you. Stroke. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. 
strength to you. I curse that spirit. Look at this. In the name of the Lord Jesus, come. Stand up. Come by yourself. Come. Come. Just come. 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 Walk. Come. at this 30 years stroke 30 years stroke 30 years stroke come on now look at look at look at look at what is happening 30 years stroke come on give jesus praise 30 years stroke look at look at look at this man come on son look at look at this look at this look at this look at this Look at, look at, look at this. Look at this. Hallelujah. Ah. Come on now. Hold on. Hold on. How many of you saw this man when he was coming? Are you seeing this now? Look at our daddy. Daddy, are you surprised? I'm surprised. What is happening to you, right? There is no penny. Completely. <laughs> Look at, look at this. Come on, give Jesus praise, 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 praise. The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. Dance to the shame of the devil. The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, there are people who believe that these things are stage managed. Hallelujah. How can you stage manage a miracle with an elderly man like this? Eh? From Niger State. This is his first time coming all the way from Niger State. 30 years arthritis. Hallelujah. I prophesy to your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto you. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy. Just leave him. Leave him. He's just sitting down. He's, he's so excited he doesn't know what to do with himself. I cannot stand up by myself like that. Before. Alright, sit down and try it again. Sit down and try it again. You know, he couldn't stand up. Help him. Help him sit down. Try to stand up now. Look at this. Help him. Oh, hallelujah. It never returns again in the name of Jesus. Whoever is responsible for any evil, he will reap what he has sown. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Let's hurry up. When God. Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. Hey! When she don't say yes, nobody can say no. When she don't say yes, nobody can say no. Hallelujah. Please, if you are with a little child, can you guide them so that we know what is wrong with them? Let's save time. There are a number of people. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar and a wicked person. 
Madam, look at me. This woman is going through a very serious situation. But let me tell you, it will change. I don't care what has been removed. One has been removed. They removed. Don't cry. It's okay. It's okay. What exactly did the doctor say? They didn't say anything. That I can no longer conceive. You can no longer conceive. Why? Because one has been removed and the other one is not healthy. One has been removed. The other one is not healthy. Ah, son of man, can this bones be begun? Hallelujah. I wish this woman was here who had been burying that carried her child. I don't know if she's here. This fair lady, she's not here. I wish she were here. She would have brought the child. And let's see that medical reports can be cancelled. She's not here. Habiba's sister. Sadia's sister, she's not here. That is she around? Come, come, come with the child. Where is she? Come with the child to the shame of the devil. That's a woman they say will never take in. Come with your child. That's a miracle baby there. Come. Please come, madam. Sorry, don't be embarrassed. Clear the way for her. I want to encourage you. Come. This kind God, do. I never see in kind, no. This kind God, oh. Hallelujah. Hold on. This, this is a woman that nothing would have been able to happen. Nothing completely. But look at the fine boy. See, look, let me tell you. There is nothing that ends argument like results. You can fake a headache. Can you fake a child? Hallelujah. Madam, let me tell you the truth. You will not only carry a child, you will carry plenty of people. Please believe. I, I, I brought her out to show you. When they gave birth to this baby, this baby was looking like an angel. They were snapping the baby, right? Hallelujah. Father, every woman in this place, every family, trusting God for a miracle child, in the name that is above all names you did it for this family do it again do it again oh god do it again oh god hallelujah madam you'll be free right now look at me i don't care whether one womb has been removed or whether another one is not working is irrelevant all I know is you will have children and they will grow in wombs. Where it will come, that is not my responsibility. Are you getting my point now? The child is in amen. Something will leave you now. This is, this is demonic. Let this woman go now. I command that you get pregnant. Give birth to miracle children. We create new wombs right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. You will return with your miracle children. I will attend to everybody now. We will be very, very fast so that we can save time. Worship team, please. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Hold on. Let her talk. Yaro na ne aje Israel. Ne aje Israel zin. She she na aiki the Nigeria Christian Progress Commission, Abuja. So say so take a few. Ya leading ya in South South. Say ya a dog guda hudu sinje sun dukeshi. So ka chile she the go fourth floor. Sun yet the shakasa. Suka karba kudia wajenshi. Tun di zeba fourteen. Yena pama a Israel. Shine asa na che. Am I naiki enzu? Hari enzu? Am I enzu? Loka chinde ya fadi. Anche baza yibungana ba. Baza yirubutuba. Baza yite fiaba. 
gasu ya ce to a ci gaba da treating din shi yayi addu'a Allah ya ga mace za yi tafiya za yi magana za yi rubutu suna yeso yanzu yana rubutu yana magana amma kafa din ne bai fara tafiya ba father in the name of your son jesus christ all the way from nigeria by the power of the holy ghost kabala toza tabaranda kalibata zide lembrash ko brande kalabati la kapraste presti satabala mande ke preske la tosko baridalaba in the name of jesus what's his name bege poche chet Bege, we call you now. Those, I don't care whether they are broken, whatever is wrong with it. Receive life now. Receive life now. We command you to stand up from that dead bed. Stand up from that dead bed now. Your hands will write, your eyes will see, your feet will walk every broken bone we mend it now thank you jesus mama you will return with a testimony in the name of the lord jesus christ and i pray for you now get you on buyer hold on buying can make his office sometimes go your back come on get the kafa harian as well at the kafa they call it singing kashabi in Alsa. That's what? Rheumatism. I'm going to pray for you. We'll pray. We'll soon get interpreters. Hausa, Baju, anyone. English, I hear Baju. Everyone. What's that, your song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That's what? That's Baggy. Ah, hold on. Come on. Sam. But can you walk and cut you now? Hold on now. Young Kaduna, but we are walking and getting Cuba. Then it's a papa, but you are one. Ah, but you are one. Then it's a papa, but you are one. Oh, yeah, but you are one. Then it's a papa, but you are one. You don't know what they are saying, just be just be there. Hallelujah. Mommy be healed of rheumatism now. In the name of Jesus. I cause that pain. Right now in your legs. Be healed. Stand up. Come. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Strength to your leg. I cause it. Pain go. Walk man. Walk. 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 Look at this. Walk. Look at this. Any any improvement on your leg? Look at, look at. Rheumatism. Couldn't walk well on one leg. In the name of Jesus Christ, it becomes permanent. Completely permanent. In Jesus' name. And your son is healed and he will return. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. We have to hurry up. Sam, sing something else, please. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broke. Strength where I My, my God is awesome. I 
collecting the prayer request very quickly start collecting the prayer request very quickly
Go! You freeze out.
exact people. One, there are four of them. Two, the angel of the Lord literally, literally, literally 
is entering these homes and they are receiving dramatic breakthroughs dramatic breakthroughs the Lord is showing me over 10 people and I see academic chains this is what I see 10 people 10 people and this is not your fault 10 people I'm going to begin to count 1 to 10 and goodness it's like fire 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 I cost those spirits 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 I cost those chains I cost those chains I cost those chains It comes to an end I tell you it comes to an end that chain breaks now and forever it comes to an end hallelujah let's just flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing if this is all he does tonight that's all right hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing two eyes in the spirit and God wants to open up at least 19 people here in the realm of visions and supernatural experiences. Listen, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, prophetic fountains, those eyes in the spirit, sheketa taparata. Sheketete pokotos. At least 19 people, at least 19 people, Shataka Bariata, fire, physical fire coming upon your eyes, physical fire coming upon your eyes. Open them up, oh God, to these dimensions of supernatural revelations. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord. And God wants to cause barrenness from two families. Now, two families, right now, just two families. Father, wherever these families are represented, right now, let your power visit and set them free now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, this row. All of you here, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. From the front, right to the back, there are people that God again is visiting their families. Families, families. God is bringing breakthrough right now right now just this road lord in the name of jesus let those families let the angel of the lord there are angels walking through this crowd right now right now right now in the name that is above all names angels of the lord walking to families performing specific miracles specific miracles specific miracles Specific miracles. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. 
Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hallelujah. I cast that spirit from this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands everyone. Lift your hands. There are some devils that need to leave this place right now. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 God is bringing mighty deliverance for people now. Every service is miracle service. Are you getting my point now? We're going to shout that name, Jesus. My goodness. I'm telling you, major deliverances that will bring breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. The symbol. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name. I command every devil and every spirit, every act of witchcraft and divination in the name of Jesus, and at the count of three, they must come out of their hiding places and go never to return. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I cause devils now. I cause spirits now. I cause spirits, every wicked spirit out of God's people out of every family now I break spells I break witchcraft I break the power of divination bring them out bring them out I cost that power it's not just them families they are families I set fire 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 upon altars. I set fire upon Hallelujah. Lift your hands again. God is visiting families. This is not about you. All the people here are representing families. Lift your hands. Oh, the fire of God must fish them out. There is no hiding for any spirit. Shh. At the count of three, you will shout that name at the top of your voice. And a sword of the spirit will go to your family. There must be deliverance tonight. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Jesus! Hallelujah. The Bible says, How awe inspiring are your ways? It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. All the people you see here, 
they are representing their families God is stepping into families those doors must be open I see ancient gates in the spirit ancient gates and I'm about to command them to open listen when I command those gates to open those affected you will feel it physically these are the gates that cause limitations over people and families but in the name that is above all names I come tonight under this yeah, apostolic yeah. And prophetic anointing. <laughs> Advancement. I command you be open. I command you be open. Hallelujah. Any family, lift your hands, that is tied down by any kind of limitation, I don't care what it is, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if that spirit has survived anywhere else, in this place, this is the mount of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command those doors open now. I command those doors open now. Doors of breakthrough be 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 open now. By the force of the spirit, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it, shout it. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that every force stopping the advancement of my family by the fire of the Holy Ghost live now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every power you must be in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Pick up your Bibles, Daniel chapter 10. The devil is in trouble tonight. Zente kaparakata pikata sitanda seke poko to poko to pakata Daniel chapter 10 You have come for koinonia is an experience is a mountain something must change about your life Kabrando gozo protoko shupalata pai Daniel chapter 10 verse 10 and behold an hand touched me and set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands and he said unto me O Daniel a man greatly beloved 
understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee I am now sent and when he had spoken this word to me I stood trembling verse 12 then said he unto me fear not Daniel had been fasting and praying he said for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God thy words were heard and I am come to thee for thy words verse 13 but the prince listen but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days and lo Michael one of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia listen the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Then it says, against principalities. Against powers. Then against rulers. Then against spiritual wickedness. They do not operate in the earth realm. The Bible says they operate in the heavenlies. This prince of Persia was the territorial spirit across the land of Persia. So when Gabriel was bringing the answer, the solution, that prince stopped him. I have been put in charge of this territory to make sure that breakthrough does not come to men. To make sure that men are not lifted. But there was a man in the earth realm who kept praying. And while he prayed, it was on the strength of his authorization the, from the arsenals of heaven, the Angel Michael had to come because he's the archangel in charge of war. We are going to pray tonight. Every land has territories. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every land has territories, and there are spirits. Those of you who have listened to the message, give me this mountain. There is a spiritual dimension to life, and there are met there are certain things that will never manifest in your life until you prevail in prayer. Jacob held on to him. He said, I will not let you go. He said, leave me for the day break it. He said, no way. He said, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. He said, your name will be changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God. And you have prevailed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you what we just read was the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, when you pray, it just comes. It, 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 it makes... Listen... The kingdom of God is a system. The earth realm is a system. Are you getting my point? It is as soon as Zion travails, hallelujah, that she will put forth. There is a birthing. This is the ninth month. If you didn't come to pray tonight, I'm so happy about the rain because you won't go anywhere. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray now? We are going to pray. Listen, we are going to confront powers. Zechariah chapter 1, please, quickly. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and I saw, and I beheld what? Four horns. A horn is a symbol of authority. Next verse. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? What are these horns? And he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah. These are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem. These are the horns that are making your father to never reconcile with your mother. These are the horns that make finances to stop when it's about to come. These are the horns hindering the gates of marriage. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then I said, what come this to do? He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. These are the horns that have robbed you of your testimony of your joy he said so that no man does what 
lift up his head. They have put a barrier around your family and your life. And they have said no man will lift up his head. So every time you want to lift up your head, there are horns. They station them. Hear me and take seriously what I'm saying. They have drawn the boundaries. Man takata. Goodness. I tell you, I sense deliverance fire in this place tonight. Oh, those horns must leave. For sure. There are horns stationed across territories to make sure that men do not rise. Some of you, this is a limitation. You are the first person in your family to get to the university. There are horns. But tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to step out and put on our priestly regalia. We are going to confront the heavens he told Job, he said, Has thou commanded thy morning? Did you speak into the heavenly territories? Did you command the things to align themselves? We are praying tonight. The Bible says the stars fought for Deborah. She was a warrior, and the constellations arranged themselves to make sure that enchantments could not go to the heavens. Lift your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on now, you have to be more serious than this. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. That every power. Across my territory. That wants to stop me. And stop my family. From rising, up, from rising up I challenge you tonight, challenge you tonight by, the by the blood of Jesus lift your voice and begin to pray <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we are praying tonight. Jude 1. Jude 1, verse 9. You will see tonight that Satan is interested in this body that you wear. Jude 1. Everyone read. Want to read. Hold on. Do you see Michael again? Michael in Daniel contending against powers. He shows up again in the book of Jude. Read on. Want to read? Hold on. He disputed about the what? Spirit? Soul? 
body. Satan wanted the body of a man. Satan wants the bodies of men. Not just their spirits. Because without a body, without a body, demonic activities cannot be carried out. The church is called the body that the Holy Ghost uses. It's called the body of Christ. The body that the Holy Ghost wears. There is a law in this realm. That any spirit that does not have a body cannot function in this realm. So Satan wants the body of Moses. If he looked for the body of Moses, Moses in the Old Testament, how much more your own body? So he will afflict you. He wants your body. So he will manipulate your body and all kinds of objects moving around. But the Bible says, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not. Listen. We are going to pray. I am establishing a prayer point. Jesus entered the temple which was his body and he found out that there were strangers in that temple. Are you getting my point now? Those who should be in the temple were not there and he found people doing business in the temple. There were transactions going on in his body. That's the same way Satan carries out all kinds of transactions in human bodies. And you hear people complaining. Objects are moving in my body. You see people sleep in the night. And all kinds of devilish things come to oppress them. Tonight we are going to pray. Are you getting my point? Please if you are sitting except you are under the anointing stand up. And let's take some time to pray. You must get angry tonight and let's pray. Because something must break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Lift up your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that, my that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body, my body belongs to Jesus. Therefore, every strange spirit attempting to hold on to my body, I command you right now, depart from my body now. Lift your voice and pray. Every stranger, Every stranger, this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Everywhere the gospel was preached, Jesus demonstrated that he was not only interested in the spirits of men, but their bodies. What healing does to your body is what salvation does to your spirit man. Hallelujah. We are going to cause the root of sickness. I want you to get ready because the devil is in trouble. There's fire burning in this place this night. No matter how mad a man is, 
he does not enter fire by mistake in the name of madness are you getting what i'm saying no matter how stupid a man is in his insanity he knows fire when he sees it the bible says he maketh his ministers winds are you getting my point and his messengers flames flames of fire every stranger in your body is about to leave i don't care what it is called sickness is that let me tell you how you know that these things are demonic because many of us when you pray on it it will go and then later on it will return you are a lady they pray for you and then for one or two or three months you find out that your period just comes normally no pain no nothing and then in the fourth month it backfires again there are people recurrent headache all kinds of devils a growth comes and then it goes you pray and try to treat it it goes we are going to set it on fire right now are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says know ye not that your body i showed you from the book of jude satan was fighting with michael over the body of moses hallelujah this body is your legal access for living and functioning in this realm if it is battered beyond repair your spirit will no longer be able to stay there and it will have to leave so if satan cannot get to manipulate your mind he will batter your body in a way that your spirit cannot live and it will have to go we are going to pray many of us as you are praying right now you will be surprised ah huh? now is the time to pray all those hold on please one minute genotype ah huh? i've read my bible from genesis please listen this is very serious what i'm sharing there's no mention of any nonsense of genotype in this bible have you read your bible there are many ladies right now many guys they cannot even get married they can't think of anything because the devil put one rubbish embargo called genotype ss as and all of those rubbish now you want to get married or you want to settle down they tell you no health wise every parent is carrying their child and running away the devil is in trouble tonight we are going to pray if he was not here he should not be in your life are you hearing what i'm saying believe what i'm saying whatever has affected this body has affected god's property and we're going to pray and invoke his presence that he will rise in his jealousy and attack any stranger are you hearing what i'm saying many of you as you pray growth will disappear see the trouble is that many of us have been praying but we we of course i know not here but generally we we do not know the power of the corporate anointing psalm 133 talks of god depositing the blessing where people are gathered together in unity that's different from your personal prayer life are you getting my point now we are going to pray there are traits of infirmities around your family there are traits of infirmity in your life there are many of us all sorts of embarrassing conditions skin problems to the minutest to anything hear me no matter how small it is it is according to your faith tonight are you getting what i'm saying he said whatever my father has not planted whatever he has not planted he must be uprooted don't sit down and tolerate it what you tolerate in your body the devil will use it to destroy you but when you resist the devil the bible says he will flee lift up your voice we're going to pray again say after me in the name of jesus christ every sickness every infirmity every abnormality in my body hear the word of the lord i command you to leave this body now i command you to leave this body now 
Lift your voice and begin to pray. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Joel chapter 2. Let's start from verse 23. Joel 2, verse 23. Want to read? Verse 24. Verse 25. Shout it with all your heart. Shout it. Listen, listen, listen. We are still praying. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Based on the word of God. I place demand. For restoration. In my life. In my family. Hallelujah. We are going to pray that prayer again. You know the areas you want restoration. Please we are not playing games tonight. The presence of God is here. Hallelujah. When we get to that party, we'll mention it. And we're going to pray. The Bible says, I will. It didn't say, I will send someone. I will supervise your restoration. Hallelujah. The years. We're going to say, Lord, turn the hands of time again. Turn the hands of time. Let that which the devil has stolen be restored. There are things that need to be restored tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive sevenfold restoration of everything the devil has stolen in my life. Now mention them. Your health, whatever it is. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, 
Jesus, because our eyes will see the desires of our hearts and our hands will handle it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Just give me 10 15 minutes and we're out of here. If this is all we have done tonight, it is worth it. There's no place for you to sit, stand, sit on the floor, sit anywhere. Go ahead. The service is already on, so. At least there should be no vacant seat. There are still people standing. The person is under the anointing. Let the person lie down on the floor and let someone use the seat. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what the word of God has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. It's not even knowing that there is a kingdom principle. That's not revelation. Revelation is knowing how to make that principle work in your life. If it cannot work in your life, then it's useless. Hallelujah. See, we keep sharpening ourselves like this, like arrows in the presence of God. We're sharpening ourselves. Because we're trusting God to attain a statue in the spirit. Where no power in existence can stop your fulfilling God's destiny for your life. You believe that? There is a generation that is depending upon our faithfulness. The Bible says, he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. We are making investments in the spirit. We are laboring, we are travailing you won't be surprised when you see your life and your prophetic destiny tomorrow because you will know that yes it is god's grace but paul said it this way i am what i am by the grace of god right but he said this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than ye all there is grace that manifests as the favor of god and there is grace that manifests as supernatural empowerment to do Hallelujah. The Lord is changing your life. I'm telling you. Gradually. The Bible says line upon line. Precept upon precept. Your value system. Your life. The quality of your Christian experience. It's changing. 
And then like the 71 day, he will trust you with responsibilities. He will send you and you will be shocked to see that he has built you to be his finest. The finest of the finest of the best. Don't trivialize what God is doing in your life, brothers and sisters. Week after week, you're submitting yourself to the dealings of the Spirit. And it will translate into something in your life. You may not look like it now. See that? There is no athlete who wants to look good when you are rehearsing. Have you seen an athlete like that? You are conscious of your shoe. Let it not have mud. No, 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 no. When, when you are training, you will see footballers get dirty and all of that. But when they lift that trophy, huh, they can now dress and enjoy the celebration. My Bible tells me that no man that warreth will entangle himself with civilian affairs. These trainings will prune you. It will, it will, it will build you. Listen to me. It will challenge you. It will stretch you. It will provoke you. But when you submit to the dealings of the spirit, the end of it is peace. Something will happen in your life that money cannot buy. Something will happen in your life that is not common. You will now know that it is not common to be yielded to the spirit. It's not a gift. Not everybody is interested. There are many people who are born again. But very few people are interested in the things of the spirit. So God is teaching us. We spend time now to pray and travel in the spirit. You cannot imagine the levels of victory. And so you will just step home and you see that doors begin to open. And some of you, your loved ones will not know. They will just say, aha, uh -huh, things are working well now. Things don't just work. They are enforced in the spirit. Learn this. Learn this. Learn this. One day it will change. It's a waste of time. Time does not change things. Are you getting me? Engaging kingdom principles. 38 years. That man was at the pool of Bethesda. In less than 5 minutes he got up. He would have remained there forever. So the word of God that you are receiving. You must believe it. Please hear me. You must believe it. If you are just sitting down. And watching every week. And just looking and hoping. That this word will make sense one day. You may be deceiving yourself. The Bible says ever learning. Have you seen people like that? They have all of the revelation. But never coming to the comprehension of the truth. Depart from those kinds of people. When you come into the presence of God. Give your heart. It says meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it gives you an assurance. What's the assurance? That thy profiting may appear. Look, let me tell you. Um, you see, if your life does not bear fruit after a particular time, you will be frustrated. Because it's God that sees the heart. Men look at the outward appearance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Men do not have the ability to see the heart. So, your Christian experience must translate into a testimony that glorifies the name of the Lord. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? If it does not, your family members will never see the relevance of your commitment to prayer and to the study of the word, the disciplines and the constraints of the spirit. Say, my life will bear fruit. Say it, my life will bear fruit. Brothers and sisters, if you go to your house and there is a sick person and you have a revelation and you pray for that sick person, stand up my brother, and you pray for that sick person and the sick person stands up, do you know that that is a sermon that is more than one year of beckoning up? You don't need to invite people and say, come for Christ. No, 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 no. no. The woman, at the, Samar the Samaritan woman said, come and see a man that has told me everything I've what is the result in your life that compels people to want to know about God? If your life continues to remain a barren wilderness, there is no reason 
why people should be attracted to your God. There was something that Ruth saw and she told Naomi, he said, my, your God will be my God. Hallelujah. It's not just for you to come and watch a man of God doing great things. No. It's to provoke your spirit and you go back with that anointing. You're not falling down for nothing. Say, I'm anointed. Say it. And some of you are even laughing at yourself. Say it. It has nothing to do with fivefold ministry. It has everything to do with being alive. Hallelujah. And you step into your house, you step into your place of work, and you step in as an ambassador, as an envoy. Don't let people mock your emoji, emoji for nothing, emoji, emoji. They keep calling you when there's trouble, they pass you. You are emoji as a nickname. No. Emoji, you say yes, and they pass you, and, and you are not contributing anything to the kingdom. Elisha said, Hi, I love that guy. He said, let Naaman come and know that there is a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. That there is a prophet in Israel. Can the devil look at your family and say, ah, if, if only I can shift Zuera out of the way and like a big hen, you stay there and say you are invited. I have become a shield. He said, as for me and my house. For many of us, it's as for me and myself. It must translate beyond you. Are you getting my point? You shield others. You are minding your business and you see the devil trying to oppress somebody. You say, Satan is my business. It's my business. Whether you invite me or not, it is my business. You must let this person go. Hallelujah. Listen, it's not enough for you. Don't get used to seeing miracles, healings, deliverances. You know, in Koinonia, we're so used to miracles. When it happens, you just watch one of those things that's happened again. You see, it's a lesson. It's a handwriting upon your life. Are you hearing me? That God is challenging you and telling you that your life ought to be supernatural in every way not just by making noise and disturbing people when they are sleeping praying in tongues no it must translate he said let your light so shine before who before yourself before men you already know you have the light but they do not know he said let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and as a result praise your father in heaven when was the last time someone spoke to you about his situation and he said that's all right that's all right i come in the name of the lord jesus christ and you picked up your phone you said let's pray many of us is just hey yeah see, i just returned from koinonia it was powerful this night ah you missed and ben said, i'm i'm having a little stomach ache said, oh, it's like that let's let's just lie down it's too late the chemist is closed oh, oh. no 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 you need to get angry one day are you hearing what i'm saying as soon as you get home you hear your sister saying finally my name came out they are about to to downsize me and 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 do all of that and he said oh i'm sure that god knows how he will work things out look at what you are saying you are the ambassador you are the voice of god in that room you must die one of the things i've learned listen to me one of the things i've learned about working in the anointing is that you must die to your ego hello are you hearing what i'm saying many of us are so conscious what if i i tell the people god will bless you and god doesn't bless them tomorrow they will now see me and say pastor that prayer you know people are so funny pastor you prayed and the prayer didn't work oh. and you feel stupid you feel embarrassed if i do well god should take the glory if nothing happens who should take the shame uh, answer me who should take the shame so if you are taking the shame you have been hallelujah go and pray for the sick person pray let the person die in your hands no problem just pray 
you now go and find out what is wrong with you and then the person says there's there's one wound if i open you say ah you wouldn't have even told me look just quietly go to the hospital challenge your faith hallelujah don't say me i'm not a man of god's wife i want peace i don't want to trouble satan let him know take away you see i believe that our mindsets are changing that mindset of i don't trouble you satan don't trouble me too let's all mind our business it does not work in this earth realm are you getting what i'm saying it does not work in the earth realm there are many of us i would not be surprised that there are some of us who sit down like that you believe that because you are not active in the things of the kingdom when the devil comes you will jump you and go and look for those who are really causing him trouble and he said the devil passed please pass i don't have anything i didn't look for any trouble it doesn't work that way satan does not disturb you because you have become a slave to him right but you must you must tear down the assaults of the devil over the lives of people say one more time i'm anointed say it i'm anointed the holy ghost just took over this meeting let's just flow with the way he's i'm anointed look at your hands everyone look at your hands i know you have been insulting it that it doesn't look nice forget about all those ones look at your hand whatever you have there is your hand whether it's rough or smooth it's irrelevant just look at your hand i'm talking about the spiritual the spiritual content i like you to say my hands represent the hands of jesus they carry the anointing of the holy spirit they can produce results and work wonders do you believe that this is god bless you this is my mentality this is my mentality my hands are not just for eating no it's, there is there is something upon my hands jesus has placed his hands upon my own hands many of us we keep falling down and rising but we are not blessing anybody i want to ask you a few questions just a few minutes and then we'll round up listen how many of us believe we are anointed we just said we're all anointed the question i have for you tonight is who has your anointing brought to the kingdom has your anointing been able to save anybody i once was lost huh come brother that this brother was lost and on the strength of the anointing that you have whether it was to save him to get him healed he has now come into the saving knowledge of the kingdom If your anointing, listen, I'll tell you why many people do not see more of the anointing in their life. They want anointing. And the first question is for what? What do you want it for? So you'll be speaking and people will fall down. <laughs> if that is your definition of the anointing, if that is your scope, you know, especially the youth, we like power. And, and there's nothing wrong with it you like the fact that you just sit down and say i'm speaking some of you while i was talking and things were happening you were it was as if you were pouring cold water in your body calm down the lord is speaking to you right now calm down if there is no passion in your hearts to see his kingdom come i am telling you now you do not need the anointing and you shall receive dunamis acts chapter 1 verse 8 please project it for us and you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power is to an end it says and you shall be what witnesses witnesses who is a witness who is a witness if tosin slaps this gentleman and i saw it what do you call me a witness if we go to the court i said tosin really slap i saw it so i'm a witness the holy ghost makes you a witness you were not there when jesus died are you are you getting what i'm saying you were not there when jesus died were you there you were not there on the cross but now you are standing to represent a message that you were not there physically so the holy ghost says at least i was i was i was there i was not in jesus on the cross but i was around i saw everything let me partner with you you do the talking 
and then I will prove that you are not a liar. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you tell the sick that Jesus has healed you. All of this rubbish sickness is over. And the Holy Ghost says, yes, I was there on the cross. By his stripes, this guy has been healed. And you stretch forth your hands and the Holy Ghost validates that your claims are true. Everyone say, I'm a witness. But the, the challenge is that many of us are not witnesses indeed. You have roommates, you have people in your workplace, and there's no transformation. No transformation. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. Hallelujah. I may not have time to talk so much about it, but I, I, I really wanted to talk extensively on soul winning tonight when God just took over. We give him praise. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Because at least he visited people and he blessed people. But the question I have for us is that who is coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because of the investment of the Spirit upon your life? There are many of us who are the only ones who are born again in our family. There are many of us, you leave people just in and you get up and carry your Bible and come for koinonia. And you are happy. Again and again we've had people here, especially students, when they are in their final year, some of them get to find out about koinonia. It's not like they do not know. But for many people, the God of this world has blinded their minds. They don't care. Are you getting my point? And some of us just sit down, we just watch. And the devil keeps destroying these lives. And then at a point where they have two or three weeks to get out of Zaria, then they come. And you see them crying and wondering and getting angry with you. And you say, sorry, it's okay now. And then you don't do anything about it again. The Lord is speaking to us. Do you know why many ministries let me be sincere with you do you know why many ministries are small small in terms of membership and small in terms of impact look at every ministry that there is a rich investment of the ministry of the holy spirit they are committed to turning many into righteousness right and transforming lives why should i want the holy ghost in my life why should i want his anointing when i'm not interested in praying for the sick right when i'm not interested in 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 seeing people set free you see the church has reduced anointing to money hello hello and many of us are already becoming victims of this theology our concept of anointing is just power to prosper So I have the anointing, meaning I have the anointing to prosper financially. So you buy the car, you buy the clothes, you build the house, you do everything and you say, I'm anointed. If you have ever doubt my anointing, look at the fruits of my anointing. Car, house. Will car go to heaven? Answer me. Will house go to heaven? Listen, listen, brothers and sisters. We must begin to live having the passions of God in our heart. There are many of us here, we used to be committed to genuine evangelism. Genuine evangelism. And we are allowing this, this demonic wave of complacency in the church to just come around. There are many churches, I say this with all apology and due respect, they cannot even remember the last time they made an altar call and they don't care. Correct? They don't care to an extent that we can preach and look at many evangelical meetings and crusades right now on the crusade ground is money they are raising and doing miracles as great as that is the end of all of these things is to see a soul not just saved in terms of the religiosity saved but lives transformed Every society is a reflection of the quality of the mindsets that are there. This is why we are passionate and committed. We do everything that we do week in, week out to make sure that souls are saved and lives are transformed. You will notice that I've almost not missed any koinonia meeting no matter where I am. 
no matter where I am, I try to make sure that Friday I am back. You know why? Because this work is my primary assignment. Any external ministration is just an extension of the apostolic impact. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But this is the core. And some of you are pastors. Let me talk to you. Or some of you are men of God. You have your church. You are in a year. You will only preach once or twice. And members are just sitting down and being confused. Under different kinds of messages and theologies. Everybody coming with his... I believe in the corporate impute of the body. But the man, the one that God has put as a shepherd, you must stay and build the people. You are constructing an ideology and it must be sustained so that the people are built in that ideology. So that they won't be tossed through and through by every junk and every wind of doctrine. There are some things when some of you hear now, you won't even pray about it. Is that true? On account of what you have known. The word of God comes to build you. But when it builds you, it creates a sense of responsibility. You can't just be falling for nothing and then you stand up and you just clean your body. And when you are going, you say, Kai! I fell today again. Oh. I've been falling the last three weeks. This person said, me too. Oh. This thing, I don't know how it works. That's not the goal. It's not a thing to just... It's, it's, it's for you. How many of you here have, have sat down to say, look, bring 5,000, bring 5,000. Let's make a very serious tract. Tract that is well edited and, and has the kingdom, not religion. Say, I don't have a ministry. You don't need a ministry. You need passion. You see, that's the mindset we all have. Huh? We believe that for impact to ever happen, you must have a ministry. So three friends come together. They bring the 5,000 5, and say, come, let's settle this. Thing. Who is the Jew of this group? Who is the real Jew? If they sow a seed now, who does it go to? That is to be carnally minded. The Bible says is dead. That's, that's really what carnality is. That you are already... That, see, Judas was not a bad person. Judas was a carnal person. He looked at Jesus. And he had a business idea. The name of his business idea was Jesus. How he can use Jesus Christ. And make money. That was all. That was why he didn't even use the money. He thought that when they come to catch Jesus Christ, he would do his majestic thing again. When he found out that that thing had backfired, he died. He killed himself. How many of us here we are on Facebook? Some of us. Some of us are on Twitter. Some of us are. And we, well, not, not, not many. I say this for the sake of those who will be listening to the message. There are many of us. It's just rubbish. If you are happy today, everybody will know on Facebook that you are happy. Joyful, the sun is shining. Tomorrow, if you are angry, this world, what a dark place. Your whole, your whole emotional life on display. Idleness. We don't live with the consciousness of the kingdom. As you are laughing, please take seriously what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Yet we want to see the glory of God in our lives. What is wrong with using your posts and say, Lord, I may not be a man of God. I may not have the power to heal the sick now, but I commit myself. Is that true? To making sure that every week one soul is saved. I must come for koinonia with somebody. Sister, how has your beautiful face translated into soul winning in the kingdom? Let me talk to ladies. Your beauty is either bringing people into the kingdom or taking people out of the kingdom. Is that true? There's nothing as neutral. So the brother sees you and says, Sister, you are very fine. Say, we give glory to the, the name of the Lord. I'm inviting you. Let me use this opportunity and invite you. If you are afraid of talking to the person about Jesus Christ, some of us, once they just say you are beautiful, they just say, ah, let me not bring Jesus into it. As if Jesus is putting sugar inside food. You know, it's as if, let me, let me savour this moment now. It doesn't come every day. Let me enjoy it. Jesus, stay away. Let me not bring any religiosity. And then, the Lord watches you from the throne and says, you pray, you want a ministry. 
you want a ministry where you are everywhere you want an international ministry and god sees your heart and he knows that there are some levels of the anointing if we give this person you are going to be a disaster to the kingdom and he measured a thousand cubits that man was there until he proved that he was faithful then another thousand cubits was measured there are some of us, even if you fast for 100 days, I am telling you, more anointing will not come until you step up your passion and your, and your reckless abandon for the things of the kingdom. We are afraid of being looked at as being fanatical. Right? So many of us, I'm not a man of God, please, please, I can, I can so see it. You know, there's this theology people teach. There are those who give. There are those who preach. Many people say I'm in the category of the givers. No, everybody is in all three categories. You must give, you must pray, you must preach. Hallelujah. Don't just say me, I'm a giver. And then, because the man of God really needs money desperately, he say you are doing the same thing with me. You who is giving me and preaching is all the same thing. It's true that it's the same thing, but if it's the same thing, it means you can switch. It's still the same thing. Preach to who has changed because of you. How many of us does your presence judge sin and iniquity? Listen to what I'm saying. Does your presence, I'm not talking of condemnation, right? I'm not talking of condemning people and just writing people off. That's, 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 that's something else. That's a theology that came from hell. But does your presence judge sin and iniquity truly? That someone wants to do something bad and your presence is an inconvenience to the person. For some of us, your presence is a, is a catalyst. Bless your head. Thank God you have even come, sir. and then let me not even let me not just bypass this how many of us have truly made up our minds to part with iniquity listen listen please do not ever think that there is a way of negotiating your way into intimacy with god if you really want authentic power iniquity must be far from you when I talk of iniquity, you, you know what I'm talking about. It must be far. Don't say it does not matter. Don't say it does not matter. I'm repeating it. You must hear me. Don't say it does not matter. You will never walk in authentic power. That's why a lot of people cast out demons. The demons cast them too. Because they know that Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. We joke around with the issue of sin and iniquity in the body of Christ. And then we believe that because God is gracious, right? Iniquity is what will give Satan access to your life, your state of heart. Iniquity is not just sleeping around or drinking and smoking. They are fruits of that iniquity. Iniquity is a state of heart that is perpetually rebellious towards God and the laws of the kingdom. The psalmist said, if I cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He said, he that has clean hands and a pure heart. When there are still Christians giving bribe and taking bribe, you will never see the hand of the Lord. Don't say it does not matter. You want job. Somebody saying, bring 250,000. And you are happy. Say it's like that. It's Nigeria. Please don't bring any church thing here. Bring it, oh, bring it. Because you are the don't try to dichotomize your life and say, This is my social life, this is my spiritual life. What is the meaning of that nonsense? In one of the revelations, the four living creatures were in one body. Huh? Four dimensions functioning in one body. We must be far from iniquity it has been the ancient key to the presence and the power of god and by the grace of god almighty we will not water it down in koinonia we will preach the full gospel i will tell you the truth the secrets that bring the glory and the presence of god
there are many of us we watch all kinds of nonsense we think it does not matter look at look at the way your mind is huh? you can't look at a beautiful lady and just go free as soon as they are sharing the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ you feel like starting another service for yourself because you have you have polluted your mind watching all kinds of nonsense it's a culture it's a sacrifice am i blessing you tonight oh yes it's a sacrifice there are many of us ladies anybody you can even be walking on the road somebody will just park and say enter you say really let me enter first and find what sort of don't you live by values everybody say values say it shout it values as a kingdom citizen never forget this we live by values you may see us jump around but let me tell you the love of god constrains us hallelujah sister let people be able to look at your life and say how can a beautiful lady like this not be loose and he said no i may be beautiful but i have so i've given myself like a love slave to god that i'm beautiful you know many brothers see our beautiful ladies you know koinonia has pretty ladies right brothers say amen, amen. they are your wives too so say amen. amen but listen to me now the issue here is that before the transition between now and when they become your wives you must mind yourself and discipline yourself and be a genuine christian hallelujah brothers let me give you a little secret if you don't mind yourself with respect to ladies i'm not talking of sleeping around ladies men that are over conscious about ladies never encounter the presence of god powerfully i'm not talking of sleeping around you are just thinking it's, it's still it's still the same thing you are you are stopping your mind from entering certain dimensions of the secret place i'm not saying frown at any lady after corner saying mm, i'm pressing it to god no that's not what i'm saying there are many of us our own encumbrances is what i call carnality what you wear you can be thinking of what to wear for koinonia from saturday which one will i wear let me add this is good we believe in excellence but be careful lest it corrupts your time we believe in excellence but let me tell you it's better to wear bathroom slippers and come and focus and flog it out with destiny and change your life who cares whether you wear your visage or gucci thank god but demons can bypass that visage and oppress your life and that's what we are trying to tackle in this place are you getting what i'm saying when you take care of your spiritual life then you can beautify your body on the other hand let me balance it on the other hand there are some of us that are careless about our our bodies we, we do not know that is still part of spirituality right what you wore yesterday you just look at it smell it it's not very smelly you just carry it and you're on your way to koinonia no. be intentional about your coming here don't make it look like it's a mistake be intentional plan these are all aspects of the kingdom let everything about your life neatness neatness thoroughness some of us are very dirty the way you are sitting down looking at me like this your rooms there are still plates that all these things are i'm just showing you how that your life must draw people it will either draw people towards god or away from him and don't you say it does not matter the bible says add to your faith virtue the word virtue there is moral excellence say i'm changing especially if you really are say it i'm changing because some of you as god is speaking to you go back to your rooms and wash that plate this night wash it this night hallelujah if come sweetheart if i'm going to get married to this lady i'm taking my revelation of god together with all the unrenewed liabilities that i have i'm coming to say bring your own and and let's 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 wed in holy matrimony the question is are you going to be a blessing to your partner or the person will look at you and say had i known 
what deceived me what didn't i see huh say i'm a blessing the bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed bless you you must be a soul winner from today whatever you will do to bring souls to the kingdom i say whatever in the positive way right don't go and do all kinds of babylonian things and say whatever let souls be one no in the kingdom the means is as important as the end i've taught you right because if if you say i am doing this and that so that souls will come i i allowed the man to go for weekend with me because i'm trying to win him between now and the next one month he must be born again no no that's not that's not the kind of born again we're talking about praise the lord say in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus i become serious with my spiritual life in the name of jesus i lay aside every weight and everything that corrupts my christian testimony two more things i'll talk about and then we'll pray and we'll be done hallelujah i want to talk about two things i have seen across that stops many souls from coming to the kingdom number one is anger among believers write it i don't know where this impartation of the spirit of anger flew and came from there are many of your anger is not demons the demons left since february miracle service but the anger is still there anger rage it is an aspect of your christian life you must blot out you must blot out please write it anger you can be as calm as a dove but when you get angry you can give it to anybody there are some sisters right here in this place you would have been married since if only you address this issue if you like go to prophet apostle pastor teacher you must change that thing. there are some brothers here you don't have friends you say i don't care i'm in a world all by myself you have beat everybody close to you because of anger your younger ones run away from you there's nothing about your life that is pleasing because of anger there are many pastors today the anger and the rage they have they can finish preaching even on stage they can almost slap the other person i said sing ten or what, what are you singing and you are wondering and then the guy turns and says, let's pray ha, ba, 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 ba. and he's looking i say yes, I don't. <laughs> number two immorality immorality let's bury this thing this night look at me look at me do not let anyone please 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 koinonia my conscience must be clear before god and i must tell you do not let anyone convince you convince you that a life of immorality you can be able to patch your christian experience and patch immorality i'm saying it now you must hear me in jesus name I'm, I'm telling you this from the depths of my heart there are many of you as i'm talking even the holy spirit is saying thank you jesus finally i'm getting to i'm not condemning you <laughs> i tell you the number of believers sir the number of believers that are compromising on their christian integrity especially over the issue of immorality this is probably one of the biggest reasons why many souls do not come to the kingdom if you are involved in all those things i love you but you must stop this night in jesus name say amen whether it be, you are part of it or not say amen immorality is not just sleeping around hold on so that you don't just say thank god me i don't sleep around even god knows hold on pornography pornography right now we have our blackberries it's amazing you check christian phones and see the kinds of things there i'll talk about it pornography 
all kinds of other devilish things and don't just blame the devil the day your roommate sees you and says ah, what is this with naked they say it's, it's satan I'm, I'm even waiting for end of the month no don't mock god don't mock god don't make it look like you come for miracle service and say lord i'm open and then you receive that one there are many of us we are great men and women of god but this is the setback in our lives right look listen to me this is this is bethel the place of bread huh what i'm doing to you now is like a, a doctor giving a patient injection you feel the pain but that chloroquine must enter so that you will be healed immorality sisters let me talk to you you must create rules in your life are you hearing what i'm saying if you have not been doing it create rules if you are in a relationship talk about it you are in a relationship with with a lady part of the reasons why you are in a relationship with her is because you are physically attracted to her sit down and be saying i'm a man of god and you'll be very surprised warn yourself tell yourself myself behave receive grace from god create boundaries huh i will i will tell you this don't think oh this is the law mm -hmm. man if this law is going to keep you focused and useful so be it so be it hallelujah there are many of us study yourself sister you know you are very vulnerable huh don't go as and say i know he's just a pastor it's been long since i washed his plate was the plate not washed was it not washed thank god for your generosity but you must be careful anything you cannot do in the open is questionable are you getting what i'm saying and many of us who are pastors here you are the we are the ones that are subject to the greatest attack hear me hear me man of god you accepted the call and you are careless with your life you will be very surprised if there is the call of god upon your life guard your anointing or you see the way men embarrass themselves you can fake healing deliverance is what will really show you whether you are all of that you'll be casting and demons demons are just laughing and saying all kinds of things it should never be so we are going to pray because i know that there are people affected in these areas are you getting my point and trust me if you think you need help please see me for counseling i am more than more than willing to help you we are a family don't say I'm a man of God. I'm struggling with masturbation or struggling with immorality. And I think it's, it's, it's an issue. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is nothing to be ashamed of. Because you see, spiritual things cannot be hidden for too long. They will find expression. Immorality is something we must work. I know God is helping us. We are young people, right? The TV, the media, all kinds of things. The, the challenge on the average young man right now is, is maybe 100 times more than it used to be 40, 50 years ago. I understand that, but it's still not an excuse. And please don't let anybody fool you that everybody is doing it. Huh? There are many of us that will tell you who is not doing it. No. Mm -mm. There are people who truly, truly have taken advantage of the grace of God and they love God sincerely. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. Make up your mind. And if you think you cannot hold yourself, start finding a wife quick. Quick. No, 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 no. I'm very serious. I'm not playing games. The Bible says it. It is Bibles. I'm not saying you're married because... Mm -mm, but the Bible says if peradventure in your quest to love God and you find out that you have prayed, you have fasted, you know that this one is not demons again please marry i'm telling you this marry it is a biblical i say it doesn't change anything are you joking are you married to know whether it changes something or not just marry obey the bible don't start arguing with scriptures anger immorality immorality you have a, you have pastor friends or groups sit together and talk about this about this in love don't condemn people and you when somebody comes to meet you and say see i find myself sleeping around you say i knew it 
the way I've been looking at you, I know you are not straight. No, no, no. That ministry is not given to you because that's the issue. That's listen, listen. We're rounding up. That's the reason why many people are unable to open up because they are afraid. They don't trust us, men of God. They don't trust somebody comes and opens up and tells you, This is the challenge in my life. This is what I'm going through. They'll say, Ah, have you had? Forget everybody you see preaching on stage, oh, people are dying in silence. The other person say, What are you talking about? I say, I would just you. Something happened. No. As a minister, you are a steward. Don't betray people's trust on you. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? But please. I'm talking to you. This is an admonishment from the depths of my heart. You feel that there are issues compromising your Christian experience and you need help. By the grace of God, God has anointed us to be able to offer you help. And with Jesus' joy and with every open heart, it's a privilege. But don't sit down and die. You can fake it before men. But you see, you are, it's, it's a seed you are sowing. It's a seed you are sowing. We are going to pray. Just two prayer points. Rise up on your feet. And we'll be done for tonight. Today's service was another dimension by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. While we are taking the first prayer point, at the same time, an altar call is going to be made. Please, everyone listen. This is a serious altar call. There are many of us tonight who are saying, Lord, please take my whole life. I'm surrendering everything to you. I'm tired of living life my own way. You may have even given your life to Christ before, but you know that you are not serious with God and you want to step up your Christian experience. God has shown you that he wants to use you. He's shown you that he wants to do mighty things. But you are saying, Lord, I've, I've not truly surrendered everything. The moment we start praying, I'd like you to just come and go on your knees here. I would like to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Young, old, whatever. Please. You need to truly make up your heart and your mind to the Lord. Hallelujah. The moment we start praying, please, I'd like you to come up. We're out of time. Prayer point number one. Prayer point number one. You're going to say, Lord, put a passion for souls. Put a genuine passion for souls in my life. That beginning from tonight, I will begin to be serious about winning souls and making sure that people are established in the faith. Lift your voice and pray. While they are doing that, all those who need to come out, find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you are coming. The remaining, the rest of us, please keep praying. God bless you. All of you who are coming, just come and kneel down here. Before God. There are still people sitting down. The Lord is speaking to you. If you need to be out, don't wait for anybody. Find your way and come. While the rest of us pray. Take it seriously tonight. This is the beginning. Those of us who need to come out. This is the beginning of your journey. Your spiritual journey to relevance. Your spiritual journey. Find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. This is home for you. Find your way. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. If the Holy Ghost is telling you you need to be here, then you need to be here. I surrender all. I surrender all. Those of you in front, open up yourself to the Lord from the depths of your heart. I surrender. I surrender all. All to be my I surrender. Let's sing one more time. I surrender all. I'm not the person I used to be. I am a brand new person. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Listen, all of you. You are not the brother or the sister that just came and knelt down here. You are walking up totally free. I don't care what it is you have done. 
I don't care what has been the testimony. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all, the th all things new. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I declare by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that you use these ones. May they be powerful men and women from today transform their lives. I break the power of sin over your life. In the name of Jesus, I break the power that causes you to rebel against the ways of God. I declare that from today you will have passion for the things of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'd like you to celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up. Rise up. God bless you. Hallelujah. I salute you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the ushers. Follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll have your information on Tuesday. Um, you'll pray with the prayer department so that you'll get filled with the Holy Ghost. For those of you who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they'll administer the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Our time is up. We can't take um, another prayer request well that's okay for today um, before I invite those of us who are worshiping with us for the first time let me just take a few announcements now I want to announce something please next week Friday the Lord put this in my heart next week Friday I like us as a family of faith and all those who are connected to this ministry all across the nations, all across this nation. Please I like us to fast. Hallelujah. We are going to fast. And your fasting starts from 6 p.m. on Thursday. Hallelujah. Not 6 a.m. on Friday. 6 p.m. That's Friday night. You won't eat anything. We are going to be praying. There are certain things that God wants to birth and bring hallelujah so we're fasting from thursday 6 6 what 6 p.m right and we'll run it as a marathon until um if i said friday 6 p.m we will not eat before coming so we'll break by 3 p.m 3 p.m is okay so that you can eat before coming please listen it's a dry fast complete dry there's no sipping water or honey. There's none of those things. Please. I listen, listen. Those are are, are children here. For the sake of the children, um, you may they, they can just start their fast from six in the morning to maybe twelve. But if they feel they can go the extra mile, no problem. If you're sick and you are on medication, you can choose whether to join us or not. But please, everyone, Thursday from 6 p.m. It's not just to fast and sleep. By the grace of God, from Friday morning, this, this place will be open. Prayer department from Friday, if you can pay the price, will allow this place, while the setup is going on, you can stay around, pray around, just pray and prepare. By 3 o'clock, you go and eat well and come. You won't die, please. Don't frown at me like that. You won't die. This, listen, this, something will happen to your spirit. Some of you have done it. You've done more than that. But just run it that marathon. So whatever you have to do, just know that once it is 6 o'clock, even if you have not eaten the whole day, once it's 6 o'clock, know that the vehicle has started moving. Praise God. It's moving down till that time. All, all escorts, all escorts, you are stretching till 6. All escorts were not stopping by 3. You are stretching till 6. All your food, you can come and eat it here. Come and die here. But still 6, please. So, the whole, is not 12 hours now. It's 24 hours. And there is, I know that there is capacity that we need to build in the spirit. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye